Hey everybody and uh, welcome back to the Game Nexus. It's uh, Dwayne here and uh, today we're going to be talking about a, a new announcement that just got made in regards to Imperial Assault. So those of you who play the game are probably uh, well aware of the fact that uh, Fantasy Flight Games has been working on a uh, mobile and desktop app to allow all of us Imperial Assault players to play the awesome campaign um, solo or rather co-op. Um, so, I mean, if you're like me and you bought Imperial Assault, um, you, you kind of bought it for one or the other or both. But uh, the cool thing about the game is that uh, you can actually play it as a solo, as a uh, competitive skirmish style game, uh, which is a 1v1 style game uh, designed just to have no story really and just all out fight each other with different objectives. And then, of course, there's a narrative campaign built into much like their game Descent. Um, and if you're like me, that was the real big draw. Um, you know, when I first looked at the game, it was very much a hybrid of what I expected from a Star Wars role-playing game, mixed in with the mini-game. Uh, equipment cards, leveling up your characters, very much sort of like what Necromunda was to me when I was a younger 40k player. Um, one of the big challenges of playing Imperial Assault campaign mode is that um, there is a lot of uh, work involved. You have um, stat tracking, uh, experience point tracking. You know, it does stretch out over multiple sessions. And on top of that, you actually have to somehow manage to bring the same group of people back to the table each and every time you're going to play. And it's really hard to sit down and finish a complete campaign in one sitting. So for the most part, my experience with Imperial Assault has been pretty much skirmish. Um, you know, and, and campaign has just been pushed aside saying, you know, I'll get to it one day when I have a big group. Um, this app that they've developed actually takes care of that in one fell swoop. Um, so what they've done, and we'll, we'll look at the app in a, in a few short uh, minutes here, but essentially as an overview, the, the app allows a player uh, to play the Rebellion side of the campaign without needing the, uh, the Game Master to play the Imperial side, which means you can grab a buddy and you can play co-op, uh, or grab two buddies or three buddies and play co-op, and the app will take care of the Imperial players. Uh, moves, it'll keep track of the Imperial player's experience, upgrades, uh, all the, the, the cards that came in the box that would normally require, you know, another player to keep track of, the app will take care of it. Um, now, the other cool thing about the uh, the app is actually, uh, as far as the, uh, the stat tracking goes, um, it takes care of that as well. So on the Rebel side, you know, you'll have a list of cards, etc. that you'll have to keep track of. The app will actually keep track of that for you. Um, so it makes it really simple to play. You're still going to need the core game. Uh, you're still actually going to have to move around the pieces on the table. So this isn't a video game per se that replaces the tabletop. It's meant to supplement it. Now, when you get the app, uh, the first thing you have to do is actually plunk in and, and tell it what your collection is. Uh, so there's a little bit of upkeep at the beginning to let them know what figures you have. And, and uh, we'll walk through that in a second. But overall, I think it's amazing news. And the best part of this is I was fully expecting to pay money for this app this app is free. Uh, so currently available on iOS and Android. Uh, December 4th is when the release date for Steam and uh, PC and Mac. So you actually will be able to use it via desktop if you don't want to use your mobile device or don't have an appropriate mobile device to use. So uh, that's pretty cool too. So we're gonna have a look at the app and uh, I'll walk you through some of the basics. I won't get into any of the tutorial scenarios. I want to actually play the app for you. just want to give you an overview of what it looks like and, uh, you know, in case you're on the fence about maybe even getting Imperial Assault, uh, maybe this app will sort of push you over and, and make your, uh, your purchase a little bit more enticing and, and have more value for you, especially if you are wanting to play the campaign. So check it out and uh, let's get So it. welcome to uh, Legends of the Alliance, the Imperial Assault uh, mobile app or uh, desktop app, depending on uh, how you're planning on purchasing it. Um, so again, this app is free. Um, it'll run on pretty much any of the hardware. Um, I'm using an iPad here. Actually, this is an iPad 2, so it's a really old piece of hardware. Um, and it still runs it nicely. So the first thing you're going to notice when you get here is you're going to have a few options. Um, they've done a pretty good job of giving you everything you're going to need to know um, as far as your rules. Um, clicking on that will launch the web browser, which takes you to a set of rules specific to the app, um, which also will walk you through some of the actual um, rules of the game itself. Um, there's a new game option. The load game option is really cool. It allows you to actually load a pre-saved um, game and you have various save slots as well. Uh, so if you are planning on playing multiple campaigns with different people, um, awesome feature. You don't have to worry about, um, <clears throat> you know, keeping track of multiple things. The app will do it for you. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do uh, when you get the app set up is you're going to want to go to collection. 
And collection is really cool. Basically, collection is going to uh, walk you through what you have as far as uh, the different sets of the game. Um, I only have the core set, and of course, it defaults to the core set because you can't really even use the app without the core set. Um, you're then going to go through and uh, and add to collection any of the different expansions you have. So you'll click on the add to collection button right there, and that'll take you uh, that'll add it to your your stuff. Um, so there's all the expansions are pretty current. Um, the out, well, there's the expansions, and it goes all the way up to uh, Twin Shadows. Um, I don't believe it has the it has the Java Realms, Heart of the Empire. Those are the two newest Twin Suns or Twin Shadows, um, Return to Hoth, and Vessel. So it has actually all of them. Going over to Allies, you're going to see all the different uh, Rebel or the uh, Alliance or the Ally um, figures. You just page over there, and it's going to have all the different ones, and I'll show you how many pages it's got. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I, I think this is basically based on your. Um, it, well, I don't know if it's based on what you have for content because it seems to have some stuff that came in the other options. Um, <clears throat> so then going over to villain, you know, see the same thing. You're going to have the option to add all these to your collection. So I'm not a hundred percent familiar with all the figures in the game, uh, but it did have all the ones that I had. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, so essentially that's how you add stuff to your collection. So the app will actually know what you have available. This is important as you play through the campaign and you're actually going to get to the point where you'll have allies being added into your, uh, your, your squad, right? So Luke Skywalker might be in a scenario. Now on that note, I'm going to walk you through the game or the, uh, the app. So we're going to go new game. Um, so there's a tutorial mission. I'm not going to actually play the tutorial mission. I'll leave that to you guys to decide to look up the rules and see how the rules play out. Um, interesting to note, though, is there's only one campaign. Um, and Fantasy Flight has basically said they'll be rolling out additional campaigns. So my initial understanding is that it would take the core campaign that came in, the Imperial Assault core set, the campaign for that, and just digitize it. They actually didn't do that. So um, this particular campaign here actually is... Um, it's called of, uh, Flight of the Freedom Fighter. It actually is a original new campaign and they've committed to actually rolling out more campaigns. So that's kind of exciting. So my guess is that in that campaign, you're going to see some of the heroes that you've selected possibly show up as allies. Um, so a little fluff piece there. And then the first thing it's uh, going to do is ask you for your difficulty. Um, now again, going through the rules, there's some very specific rules on how um, the enemies will react and act and they lay that out very uh, carefully and it's actually really cool it's not as um, automated as I thought it does actually leave a lot to the player design and or control and uh, but they just have some specific rules so you know you can choose it we'll just go normal um, so again you're going to a save slot so the benefit here is you're going to have multiple campaigns to choose from so we're just going to choose an empty slot here now this is the cool part here. Now I don't have any of the expansions, so I can't comment on what this would look like if you had some of the expansion sets that I don't have. I can tell you that this is the core roster that comes in the core set, um, so you can choose your team. Um, just like the real campaign when you're playing this with friends, if you choose less than a full squad, they're going to give you the, the, the bonuses to the characters as far as the health goes uh, to offset the amount of people you have. So, you know, I'm a, a fan favorite here. I like Jin. I'll just pick a couple of them here. We'll just load it all up uh, and then we'll continue. So cool thing here is you're actually um, going to be able to name your squad. Um, and I think that's just the save file. So um, you just go there and uh, I'll just name it with my normal tag there and we'll go return continue that there. So one of the cool things about the app, and I thought it was really cool, and again, the, the campaign um, is a quasi role-playing experience. They lay out some narrative. So, you know, obviously there's no voicing, but just the fact that they're they're throwing this narrative in, and I don't know if you can hear it or not, but this, the actual audio is quite cool as well um, to throw that in. So it's, it's more than just a, a quiet, it's got all the Star Wars trimmings, launch the mission. So here you go with the uh, the gist of the actual app itself. <clears throat> it's going to tell you what tiles you're going to need to use to play the game, and it gives you a little fluff piece on the actual mission itself. 
Um, let's see, just continue. And uh, it'll tell you some narrative. And it says deploy the rebels. And this is the point where you're actually not deploying them on screen. You're not actually needing to uh, tell the app where each everything is. You're not doubling up on your, your, your moves and such. You don't have to do it on the table and then do it on the app. Um, they do tell you the deployment zone. Of course, that's important. And then they walk you through as the enemies show up on the table. And again, there's specific rules for for uh, where the Imperials move and how they get deployed. But they do tell you deploy the probe droid, for example. And they ask you to tag them with different colors, just like you would with the stickers in the actual physical set. As more units come on the table, the app will want you to know that there's different different units, basically. So as the initial um, steps of deployment move along, obviously the game's taking care of labeling everything, um, <clears throat> and it tells you your mission objectives as well. Um, so once the game goes active with live round one, um, again, you're not actually moving anything on the map um, as far as the Rebels and, and the, um, the Imperials go. So you're not actually interacting with the app per se. You're spending the time actually on the table. Um, you do have the ability to um, tell the app when a hero has gone. So for example, you know, you activate her and you say Jin has gone and you check mark it and that way you're telling the app to, to activate the Imperials. Um, down here you've got your options. So this is actually where you zoom into the actual stats of the heroes and it'll tell you any of the, the class cards you've got through the campaign as you start to earn them. The app's gonna keep track of that for you. So it needs to know what upgrades you're getting and what the basics. You still pull the cards out and have them on the table for your reference. You don't need to use the app for that. So this is all done through the app, keeping track of that. And that's one of the cool things about it is that I found overwhelming uh, was that you actually had all these cards all the time. And then when you finished up your campaign session for the night, you kind of had to zip lock up the cards and uh, and sort of make sure that uh, all the heroes kept track of their upgrades and such as they uh, cured them throughout your campaign. So that's kind of cool. Um, going over, you can see your inventory as well as any allies uh, that you upgrade. So this would be like characters like Luke, Han, Chewie, et cetera, would show up here. And again, the app's keeping track of it. Um, and then this is just a recap of the round, uh, the objective and everything like that, keeping track of your fame and your threat level. And then your general options as well. Some rule references in the middle of the game. Um, you know, and then you can save and quit as well. So it's pretty cool. Like I said, I'm not going to walk you through a full round, but an example of play, once the app is told that Jin has gone, it will then pick a random, or not random, but it'll actually select one of its units and give you its movement rules. And again, that's part of the learning of the app as well. As well as what's really cool is the surge priority list, which tells you the priority in which it's going to use its surges as you roll them. So it's pretty good. I haven't played it yet to give a, a final verdict, but it's pretty good at setting out some very specific ground rules on um, how to move the troops. Uh, so we'll have to give it a shot and see. But again, once it's done, you check it off and then play defaults back over to the heroes again. So you're alternating back and forth. So we'll just save and quit out of that. Here's back to the title screen. So this is the uh, the mobile app for uh, Imperial Assault. It's pretty exciting. Like I said, it's free to download. Uh, and December 4th is when it goes live on uh, desktop through Steam. So make sure that you guys keep tuned to the channel. We're going to start using this app maybe to do some battle reports um, and uh, see how the actual app plays out. I'm sorry about the quality of uh, you know filming the iPad. If you can't see anything, make sure you leave some comments and I'll do my best to clarify for you. And uh, in the meantime, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, share it, and uh, tune in for more Imperial Assault. So thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, have a great one.